Sonic Advance is owned by Sega and Sonic Team. Even though this game is rated E for everyone, the commentary in this recording may contain mature phrasings and ideas. So, as always, viewer discretion is advised. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sonic Advance Let's Play. Of course, my name is Burgerganator ZX and we are in uh I believe it's the Egg Rocket Zone. And this is your substitute for uh sort of egg death star destroyer whatever. The gimmick behind this level of course is that timer ticking away in the top left. Now, that marks how much time you have before the stage before the next stage of the rocket drops. And you can't somersault under, you know, enemy shots, but that's a different point. Now when that timer runs out, you lose a life. I mean, it's fairly simple. So, this stage has a lot of bottomless pits. Also, you need to hold right here or else you are going to fall to your death. Which is painful to say the least because no one's going to tell you, hey, you're going to fall to your death in this stage. So you just sort of got to guess, I should say. This is actually a really nice stage instead of the normally industrial sort of final egg levels, which normally have a lot of dark and metallic co colors. This has a... Yeah, this has that, but there's, it's also set against a sunset for this first part. It's actually really neat. Again, playing this as Sonic, it's a little bit difficult because he doesn't have any... I don't know, sort of motion gimmicks like Amy Tails and Knuckles do. He can't fly, he can't glide, and he doesn't have a hammer to uh, give him more stuff. Uh, I'm just sort of dicking around here, as it were. Because this stage is goofy, yo. Of course, getting the shield, very important. Saved you from a hit, as I said earlier. Doesn't do me much good. But this is just sort of a long part of the level. If you fall off here, you gotta repeat the, uh, part again. See, this level is designed to test you. It is designed to see whether or not you remember going through a specific way, because it is a maze. Which makes that sort of time limit all the more apparent. That it's four and a half minutes ticking down. And I missed the springboard yet again. I mean, that's kind of what happens when you haven't played a game like this for years. I think the last time I played this game before this Let's Play was two, three years? I don't know. But I don't tend to practice for these types of things because that doesn't lead to an organic process. It doesn't lead to me showing off some of the goofier things in this game. Which, I mean, is fine. I like showing off the weird stuff that you can encounter. But, you may also want to watch someone who's good at the game. Which I cannot profess to be. It's That's just a simple, I don't know, that's a simple all I got, really. But yeah, this is the part that's guilty of bottomless pits. Uh, think of the rocket as a three-stage sort of space rocket. The first stage, yeah, there's a huge risk of falling to your death. To your death. But, uh, after that, it becomes more maze-like. It becomes a lot harder to traverse within the time limit. Not that the time limit changes, but it, it, you cut it closer because you have to travel more level. And this is just me not realizing how half-pipes work, because half-pipes... Of course, these things have, like, the little tube-like things from Sonic Adventure 2, or from Chemical Plant, whichever you prefer. Again, a lot of this level is actually automated. There's a lot of, uh, springs, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of dash pads, which is just sort of how it is. And this trampoline is the one that we saw earlier. Meaning that I thought I could bounce all the way back up because it's a trampoline, but you can't. And ultimately, that will eat up your time in the level. For a first-time player, this level is going to test you. It is going to frustrate you. And it is uh, going to be the most annoying thing you've ever done. 
because it just keeps looping. It doesn't seem to have a rhyme or reason, although the level design is actually pretty smart. There aren't many pads you can take in this one. This is one of the more linear levels for a reason. But hey, that's half the fun, right? And the point is, as you'll see, is this stage will drop off in a sec. Eventually. Again, this stage sort of feels like it overstays its welcome. The Egg Rocket Zone. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It'll just last you for anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes if you're good at... if you, Depending on how good at the game you are, anyways. So... If you're good at the game, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. You're going to really enjoy playing this level because it tests you. It's good. It's got interesting gimmicks. But if you're new to the game, it's going to hurt you because you are going to lose a lot of lives because poor bottomless pits or because time limit. Now see, rocket drops off right here. Yes, you see the beautiful orange sunset. Now you're inside the rocket. As it's slowly, I guess, not really slowly, but as it's uh, eventually c climbing into space. Although the background drops out from the beautiful sunset to this industrial field because you're inside a rocket. It's not bad. I mean, again, yeah, it's a sort of a metallic blue, and I get that. But it's sort of been done before with any of the industrial-type zones. It's not really fresh. As I've said before, this game harkens back to a lot of the Genesis titles. Unfortunately, I think it's the weakest game of the three. Although, you'll see the other two somewhat soon. Anyways, we're back outside only for a segment. It's not like the previous stage of the rocket where... Oh, you're outside. Oh, there's a serious risk. You'll constantly flip back and forth to inside this gigantic rocket and then outside. You know, in the orange sun. Although it does give this an epic sort of feel as the second to last stage in the game. Or I should say second to last zone. Eh, either or. Take a pick. I'm not choosy. Of course, that's a spike trap. If you ride the elevator all the way up, the spikes will skewer you. So, of course, be careful not to get squished. Um, I was somersaulting up that ledge, but you can do otherwise. These barrels are really goofy because they have a definite hitbox when the spikes are facing up. But other than that, they don't, and that'll kind of throw you off because spikes. And although speed shoes are great, they're not really uh, useful in this level. Provided you know where exactly you're going, which is the opposite of what I am doing. And cheap enemy placements, cheap. That dash pad, first time I played that game, it messed me up. Because I thought it would take me to a new part of the level, and it doesn't. It just uh, throws you into invincibility, but it also lengthens the time you spend in the level having to get back up. It's not fun. No, I was dumb. I misplaced the level geometry. And yeah. I don't really have an excuse. So, jump back up, and then we're back in the rocket, and yeah, two minutes on the clock is not a lot for this part of the level. Although I do have to say the uh, stage music's a lot better than what you would normally think from, an, from a second to last zone. It's a lot better than the Death Egg in my opinion, because as good as the Death Egg is, and because lol to Sonic 3 is to best Sonic, because it isn't, in my opinion, humbly. I think this is one of the best uh, penultimate zones in the game. In any of the games, actually. Because it gives you this feeling, this music pumps you up. It's good, it's got a good beat. It's energetic, it's ominous. And it's got that sort of nice, almost Genesis techno. Which is cool. You know, I'm a music kid, and... 
That should be painfully obvious at this point. Because I like it to music. And that's not a problem. Uh, the Sonic Advance soundtrack, although, is not anywhere in particular. So have fun on YouTube. And see, once you get to under a minute, the uh, numbers start flashing red and white, meaning that you gotta get a move on. So, I try to get a move on because I don't know where I'm going. Because the level geometry isn't straightforward to semi-new players. But, you'll be cutting it close if you don't know, but you're not going to fail. Now, the latter part of the rocket drops off. And now we're in the final stage of it. Good water. So now we're in space. And that's an apology. I had to go run an errand real quick in the middle of recording. So I just hit the pause button. But yeah, now we're in space. Where every Sonic game ends up for some reason or another. Or, well, not every. Adventure didn't. Sonic Adventure did end up with you in a post-apocalyptic city. But most Sonic games like to end you in space, or some analog thereof. There are no weird moon mechanics, you are inside this rocket. It's not like you're running through a space station. Although, it's kind of weird not to consider this a space station, because now you're just sort of free-floating in the atmosphere, rocket-wise. It's kind of strange. This game, again, draws off of... Oh, you guys played the Genesis games, right? And not everybody did. So, I mean, it's a familiar game type. It just angers me because they could have done something with so much more. And I don't feel like they did. Although they did give Sonic a lot of cool moves that are situational. Now, the part of the level design here that's really infuriating is that there's very little to no bottomless pits. There are, however, a lot of spike pits and a lot of uh, backtracking type areas. And this is designed for you to run out the clock so that you end up losing a life. Or you end up uh, cutting it really close like I am because I am apparently lost. Uh, post recording. When you can realize you can play a game on autopilot, but yet n not understand what in the world you did. This is one of the more infuriating aspects because you have to wait for these moving blocks in the air to come back to you. It also eats up a ton of uh, RAM on my capture software. So, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of particles. Although, this version of Sonic of Space in a Sonic game, I think it's actually really beautiful. Because, yeah, you see all these stars and probably all this star dust because particles in the atmosphere. But it's cool because you actually get to see the planet. And it actually looks like there's weather on the planet. It's, you know, organic almost. It's cool. And even though Sonic's games don't take place anywhere close to Earth in any sense of the word, it's just really cool to see something that looks so familiar. So familiar. How does one words when you are the English? I don't know. But anyways, ugh. so it's a, it's actually kind of hard to talk about this when I'm just sort of autopiloting around. Kids, if you are thinking about doing let's plays, seriously consider that if you're going to put yourself on autopilot, that you're able to describe what you do because I cannot. Although this is the worst part of the game right here. Because there's this spring that'll shoot you back, and there's a dash panel, and a spring, and a dash panel. It just goes back and forth, and you have to time it if you are, in fact, Sonic. Everybody else has a way of getting around this, but not Sonic. It's the most annoying part of this level. It is the worst part of this level, and I am glad that I never have to see it again. As Sonic. Again, generous wind boxes move you up, and this is the last part of the level. You jump into this mechanism. Act one is over. Ugh. Welcome to Cosmic Angel, Act Two. 
This is technically the Act 2. The first one was, a. Uh, I can't remember if it was titled Cosmic Angel or Egg Rocket. It seems like both are appropriate. But now you're in... Technoland. I guess it was some sort of space station because this is a huge expanse. And this feels more like a Sonic level. There's, of course, a top middle and bottom row. This is the last platforming level in the game, I might add. And the music... It, this is my favorite level theme, bar none. It's hectic, it's fun, it's, uh, yes, it gets you pumped up with the sort of 16-bit trumpets and the, uh, sort of bass synthesizer, but it never really overstays its welcome. Th this is my favorite part of the GBA, is this sort of, uh, faux 16-bit you know, musical style, and I, I just love this GBA sound font. Especially for Sonic games. Although this isn't the best Sonic sound- best sounding Sonic game, the best Sonic sound game. Eh, <laughs> words, how does one? Uh, this level also doesn't have a ton of, uh, drop-offs, where you would die from bottomless pit. Which is good, but there are a lot of obstacles, there are a lot of weird enemies, those diamond-shaped robots are only targetable once they fought after they open up and fire. But that's not the weirdest part of this level. The weirdest part of this level are the bands in the background that seem to be moving back and forth like conveyor belts. It, that always struck me as weird. It's very strange to me, but it's very cool. This level actually isn't very long. What is the difficult part is the boss fight. And I didn't figure this out earlier, and you'll see this in the Tails run. But when you jump, do a full jump and you land on the, uh, the uh, chain of balls, you actually cause uh, Robotnik's whatever machine this is to flip. But you have to land near Robotnik. This mechanic isn't prevalent. And you're really going to have to test the game. And it's not every time either, and it has to be a completely full jump, and you have to land on a specific distance from him, and it's not a hard boss fight by any stretch of the imagination, it's just a waiting game. With slowly moving orbs that track you when they initially fire. It's... If you think also you can use a B attack on this guy, as Sonic, you can't. You cannot somersault into him. You will not hit the, uh, breakable cockpit, and, uh, the timing can be a bit specific. Uh, how long Eggman stays flipped is completely random. Yeah, you heard me, completely f bleeding random. Although a cool thing to do at this part is, after you go through that booster, and, uh, just hold down, roll, and you'll bounce off the item box holding your momentum. It's kind of fun. It's goofy in a way. But yeah, at this point, the stakes are raised because this is a potential for a game over. And as we all know, game overs are boring because you have to go back to a menu. It's... <laughs> I don't even know why there are game overs in this title. Because you can just select the stage. It's very weird. But anyways, this is actually a very good boss theme. I wish it came back in another Sonic game. Because it has that right feel of, uh, ominous, epic, and, uh, head-bopping. It's got a definite beat, it's got a, uh, nice sort of, uh, set of instrumentation. And, yeah, I just wish a lot of stuff from Sonic Advance came back, because a lot of people seem to forget this game. Because, oh no, it came out in 2002! You know, the adventure games were already out on the Dreamcast. And we would get later the uh, Adventure 2 Battle and Sonic Adventure DX titles on the GameCube about a year later or so. So this game was easily overshadowed by what everybody declared to be the hypest GameCube titles in the land. And of that I wish of that which I disagree. <laughs> It's fun. It's hard not to sing along because it's a very simple melody, but it's also very cool. You will be hearing this over the 
course of the game because every character has the same stage. Uh, spin dashing is also useless on these platforms because they're balls. After you hit the edge, you go back into your run cycle. And because the ball edge is fairly close. Also, after you hit Eggman enough times, he'll uh, quickly zip back and forth. And this is kind of painful when you configure the uh, floating orbs of getting slapped in the face. So, yeah, Eggman falls down, and yeah. Act 2 is over, and now we approach the final part of the game. Zone X. Or X Zone. Uh, spoilers? I got a couple of game overs. Because the last boss is a jerk. <laughs> Tasty. But yes, in, in the uh, X Zone, or I guess because this is a... Uh, has a lot of homages to past Sonic games, this could be considered Cross Zone. You fight the uh, Egomatic with the Checker Wrecker Ball, as the comic likes to put it. The Checker Wrecker Ball is so cool. From uh, Sonic 1, and then you fight the Egg Drill, I want to call it, because it doesn't have an official name. Or the. This is the first sort of instance of uh, Eggman having a car or other vehicle. Of course, this does have the updated Eggman graphic of, instead of his, sort of, pajama type of thing. It's his Sonic Adventure design, which I like. It's well rendered in the, uh, excuse me, in the Sonic Advance series. And I think it looks cool. But yes, welcome to the final boss, the, uh, Egg Spinner. Uh, one of the best strategies to do against this is hang out in the corner away from it. When it fires that hand, you dash in close, and you can hit it. If you're fast enough, unlike me, you can get two hits in. Again, this is tough for Sonic. You can also, uh, if you have really good timing, you when he moves down his ring, you could jump over the attack and hit him on the head. But this is sort of the cheese strategy, because this boss sucks. I hate it. It's waiting incarnate. And if you don't have the proper timing, you're going to lose all your rings. And as we all know, that's not fun. Because that puts you in a state of panic. So what I like to do is I like to hang on the opposite edge of the stage. And let him fire and let him get to the hand. Although it is easy to get impatient. Just jump a couple of times. Dash. And hit him and run back. Because this is the harder mode of the game you have to do a lot of hits and this can take you somewhere up to three four minutes if your uh, RNG is bad because he randomly selects a uh, I guess an output attack I don't really know what to call it occasionally the handle also fire much quicker than it normally does uh, again this is RNG boss and it's annoying because there's no pattern, you just have to see the, uh, whatever comes up and deal with what happens. The large ball it, the ball it fires that can damage you, has two different trajectories. The hand has a different timer seemingly every time. The laser is probably the most predictable thing, but you have to duck under it because you can't do anything. It's Sonic. And I tried to jump over it and I forgot I was crouched. It's just, is this is a bad boss design because there's not... Because unless you are incredibly amazing at the game, with your timing and RNG, you are not going to hit him. And even for uh, semi-regular players of this game, this boss stinks. It is not a fun boss. Especially if you're trying to clear this game 100%, which means you gotta play a Sanic. He takes about 7-8 hits, I haven't been counting. I wish I was. I wish they gave you a meter for how many hits there were left. Like in uh, pr other Sonic games or Sonic Rush. But again, this was an early handheld Sonic game. So, you can't really expect much. But, on the first try of this set of continues, I beat the boss. So this should be familiar, like at the end of Sonic 3. With a unique jingle, and the space station whatever exploding. 
So you fall from space in true Sonic fashion, only to be rescued by... Tails in the tornado. This changes uh, in every other character's run because uh, Sonic res rescues everyone, as the tornado is his. This is also a good render of the tornado in just about true 16 bits. This is also a really neat ending jingle. I'm sorry to talk over it. Of course, it congratulates you for playing, and now it's the end theme, which is weak. This ending theme, yeah, you do a lot to get it, but you can't skip it. Although, it, instead of this sort of sonic, sort of uh, smooth sort of pop, or a uh, soft rock that you may get it as an ending, it's funky! It's funky, it's fresh, it's... Oh, it's so unique. I love this game. It's it, it has a lot of conventions from the Genesis titles, but it's better. And it's made by Dimps, who are the kings of handheld Sonic. Thank you, Hiroshi Matsumoto. Uh, this game is just mind-bogglingly good. Its mechanics are comfortable if you've played the Sonic the Hedgehog games on the Genesis, if you've played Sonic CD... If you've enjoyed the adventure games and you like the character design for that, it's fine. This game will make you feel good. D that being said, uh, they do bring back a lot of music from previous games. Uh, I, I don't dislike it, though. I, I like the fact that it this should be a step forward, but it's forward enough for uh, new fans or it's forward enough for previous fans because they're used to something else but it's not fresh in my eyes and this is the only time you're going to hear me talking over the end credits like this harshly criticizing Sonic Advance in the Genesis games because Sonic's playthrough is Sonic the Hedgehog it's Sonic 2 it's Sonic 3 and Knuckles it's not new. Thankfully, the other characters feel a bit more fresh. Uh, again, it's all in how you perceive the game. But, uh, as this beautiful ending theme is playing, and as you get to see all of these producers and contributors... Next time we have Tales Story. See you then.